Hi guys, today I wanted to share 10 tips for keeping your house clean and organized when you have children. Yes, it is possible and yes, your children can still have a fun childhood, play with their toys, you know, make messes and all of that, but we want to make sure that it doesn't get too out of hand and too overwhelming and that is why I wanted to share these 10 tips. Also, this is by far the number one thing that I get asked about a lot. I have done a video on this before, but it's about two years old and it gets kind of lost on my channel along with all of the other videos. So I wanted to talk about this again. I recently did a video called the five habits for maintaining a clean and organized home and I will link that below and while I think that those habits apply to everyone there are definitely some things that I thought would be helpful to those of you with children. So the first tip I have for you is routines and I've mentioned that in the past video I mentioned it a lot. But routines are so helpful when you have children. I think that children thrive off of routine. They know what to expect. It's not like all of a sudden it's nap time, all of a sudden it's clean up the house time just out of the blue. If they get into a routine, it seems like they do a lot better. And by routine, I don't mean like a rigid schedule. It's just a basic routine of life and I think that we all function better with routines. So I just wanted to give a few tips for those of you who have children because things might be a little bit different. So just like I mentioned before, clean up the kitchen after breakfast, put your dishes in the dishwasher or quickly wash them. When you have children, this is really important as well. Teach your children at a very young age to put their dishes in the dishwasher or you can get a stool for them to wash their dishes on their own and they can do this at a very young age. They might even like putting their dishes in the dishwasher. It's kind of fun. They feel, you know, like a big kid and all of that but it will really help you and I know sometimes you don't feel like it but if you let the stuff sit lit, sit there you're going to get occupied with something else and before you know it it's lunchtime and those dishes have sat there for a while and then you're just going to add to it it's harder to clean a dish that has been sitting there for a while so just get in the habit of that teach your kids early on to make their beds you can teach your toddler to pull up their comforter, pull up their sheet and place their pillow at the top of their bed when they are just very, very young. It might not be perfect and that's okay. You can show them, you know, several times and then they can do it on their own and they will have a sense of pride for being able to do that. You can also teach them to put their laundry away at a very young age. You can have them when they change their clothes or even when you change them to take their clothes and put it in a hamper or in a basket. Keep a basket in their closet or somewhere they can easily access. You can have a hamper in the hallway, whatever is easiest with the layout of your home. But it is just those routines that will really help you to um, just Things that we all use every day, but your kids are no exception. They can clean up after themselves as well. And after dinner, um, everybody should be putting their dishes in the dishwasher. And yes, there are pots and pans and all of that to wash. Usually your children are satisfied after dinner. Um, a couple ideas, you can wear your baby while you're cleaning up. You could have them sit in a little seat and um, have some toys or let them color if they're old enough. My husband had different schedules because he was going to school when my kids were young, but during the time that he was home at dinner time, he wanted to play with them because he was so busy with work and school. So he would take the kids and play and I would quickly clean up the kitchen and I wouldn't, um, you know, drag it on because I wanted to go and hang out with them too. So just quickly clean up after yourself, just like I've mentioned for everyone, it's so, so important to get into those routines.
Tip number two is to regularly get rid of things that you and your children no longer use, no longer like, no longer need. I was amazed at how much stuff we had when our kids were little. My son Christian was the first grandchild on both sides and he had like every toy imaginable and like every book and just so many things and it was fun but after a while you kind of see they don't need all of it and they don't play with all of it and it just takes up a lot of room. I recently found an app called Virage Sale and it's like a virtual garage sale and it is community based. So when you go on, you have to go through Facebook. So there's a little safety and knowing that they only accept, you know, real people. They have to have a real profile picture and an administrator, um, you know, supervises the whole thing and you have to get accepted into the, the community and everything. But it's a great way to sell and purchase as well your things. So you don't have to spend all day setting up a garage sale. You don't have to save all of those toys and baby things if you're done with them. You can just list them on there and sell them and it's to someone in your own community so you don't have to drive you know an hour away it doesn't take a whole lot of time and i'm going to um, quickly show you how that works because i think it's a great app especially for moms and moms to be once you download the Virage Sale app, you are going to log in through your Facebook account and this is going to help them know that you are a real person. You're also going to add your zip code and it will search for communities in your area. There might not be a community in the exact city that you live in, but there should be several around you. There were several in my area. So I selected two communities and then an administrator is going to accept you into Virage Sale. And once they do, you will receive an email and then you can look through Virage Sale uh, in your community and then you'll also be able to post items for sale. I just wanted to use this as an example for how you post items. I am not really selling these items. These are special things from when my kids were little and I just happen to have a picture of them on my phone. So you are going to either select a picture that you already have of an item or take a picture and you can see here it gives you a space for a title and that's where you can you know, give a little information about what you are selling. You're going to select a category in which you want to place your item. And I just wanted to scroll through here so that you can get an idea of the different categories that they have. So it's not just baby items or toys or things like that. There are household items, clothing, health and beauty, lots of different things. So it's great for getting rid of all of that extra stuff that we have in our home. So I select toys and then I selected kids and then I scrolled down and there was actually a category for pretend play and dress up so it worked out perfectly because those were some dress up items and then you were going to select your price now for my own privacy and the privacy of others I did have to cover a few things up but I wanted to show you what it looks like when you look for items now say you see an item that you would like to get or you're kind of wondering how people contact you, you just press on the interested tab and then you can write the seller a little message and it will give them a private message so you could discuss the item, you could ask questions, you could talk about the price, or you could arrange for meetups if it's something that you want to buy or if someone is interested in purchasing your item. So I would regularly get rid of things that we didn't use. I think it's especially important before your children's birthdays and before Christmas because we know we're going to have more clothes, more toys, and more things come into our home during those times. So it's a great chance to go ahead and get rid of anything that you're not using. Tip number three is to have a regular tidy time or times. And what I mean by this is every day at certain points, tidy everything up. 
this is great to do before nap or quiet time and before bed. It can be just overwhelming, all of the toys everywhere, all of the craft stuff, and crayons and all of that. And if we just leave it and then they just add to it day after day, it just gets to be overwhelming. And I think it's a comfort for kids to be able to find what they wanna play with as well. So just get in the habit of having your children put everything away before nap time. And one thing that is really helpful is to give them like a 10 minute warning or sometimes when they're too young they don't really understand what 10 minutes is but you can just say in a little while in just a couple minutes in 10 minutes whatever they are old enough to understand we are going to clean up and then it's going to be nap time and that way they're not right in the middle of playing something and then they have to right away put it away and it will go a lot better <laughs> um, and it's just like us if we're in the middle of doing something fun and someone told us we need to clean up or stop right that second we would you know be a little hesitant to want to stop what we're doing so just give them a little warning and it does take time to teach kids to clean up after themselves and put their toys away I know but it is so worth it just keep on you know help them and then eventually have them do it on their own you And that leads me to tip number four. You can make tidying up a little bit fun. Maybe play some music that you only play during that time so they have in their mind. It's cleanup time. Um, you could set a timer and say, we're going to clean up um, until this timer goes off, so hurry up and get it done. You can tell them, um, find you know five blue things or find all of the crayons or all, whatever it might be, you can make it a little more fun for them, a little more interesting instead of just clean up and they look at this giant mess and they feel overwhelmed. Give them very specific things. Um, put all of the Legos away first or put all of your doll clothes here first and it won't feel so overwhelming and they'll be more likely to do it. Tip number five that goes along with that as well is make things easy to put away. So just have a bin for Legos. I know they make all these things for organizing all of these pieces and whatnot, and that might be great for an older child who really wants to keep all of those separate, but for little kids, just have all of the Legos in one bin all of the action figures in one bin, all of the, I can't think of what the little little toys are right now, but just have it grouped together in bins. One thing that is a great idea, because if your child isn't reading, they aren't going to know what it says on the label and it might be easy for them to you know, put things that don't belong in certain bins, have a picture on the outside of what belongs in that bin and that way they know all of their, you know, doll accessories or whatever goes in that bin, all of their action figures, there's a picture, it goes in that bin and that way it will be easy for them. We had a large toy box for my, I just have two boys just in case you didn't know and we just put all of the large like construction trucks and all of that in there. You could do a shelf but you just want to make it really, really easy for them to clean up because they, they will get overwhelmed if it's too complicated. Tip number six is use a timer. This is great for you and for your children. Using a timer for yourself to do your morning routine, so if you're making your bed, if you're um, cleaning up the kitchen, if you're wiping on the bathroom after yourself, set your timer. Um, you could knock it out in 15 minutes if you move fast or if you have a little more to do, you could knock it out in less than a half an hour. This is great for your kids too during that tidy time, say, you know, we have 10 minutes or or whatever you think is appropriate and we're going to 
hurry up and get it done and then you're done it's only 10 minutes you know and just like us it works well for us we can see what we can get done in 15 minutes or so another great way to use a timer is your kids want to play with you they want your attention they want you to read books they want you to play games and all of that but you do have to get stuff done sometimes right oh uh, a long time ago when my kids were little one of my friends shared with me and then another friend recently mentioned this is using a timer and that way you can get a few things done but when that timer goes off your child knows that that's that's your time to play with them so mommy is just going to clean up but when the timer goes off that means we're gonna play Candyland or we're going to play with your dolls or we're gonna go to the playground or whatever and that way they have something to look forward to if you use the timer on your phone you can make it you know one of the fun ringtones or whatever but I think that's such a great idea with your kids The next tip is to put things away or have your children put things away before they get the next thing out. So say you're doing a craft and they are having a great time and all of that, but then they're done and they just want to walk away and leave the paints and paper and all of that out so that they can go do the next thing. Get in the habit of having your children clean up that project, all of the craft supplies before they move on to the next thing. Or if they want to color in a coloring book and they have all of their crayons, you know, all over the table and all of that, and then they want to go outside, we're going to clean this up really fast and then you get to go outside and just have them get in the habit of that because if not, all of the craft stuff, the crayons, the Legos, the doll clothes and all of that get left and then they go on to the next thing and then they leave all of that stuff out so just have them get in the habit just as part of normal life put it away before we go on to the next thing or once you clean up this then we'll go to the playground and they'll get in the habit of cleaning up after themselves because that will be the rule Another tip that I used when my kids were younger that I thought was really helpful was having a basket in their room for all of the little stuff because they have lots of toys but sometimes it's that little stuff like just all these little things they get prizes for this or things from birthday parties whistles and all these little toys they like you know if your kids um, go to birthday parties if they um, go to Sunday school and get little prizes for saying their verses or whatever um, if they're in school and they get little trinkets they just get a lot of that stuff and and that was the stuff that would feel like it was just clutter. So what my kids had in each of their rooms, they had a basket for all of that stuff because there were lots of things they liked and I wanted to allow them to have that, but they had to keep it in there when they weren't using it. And to manage it, they were only allowed to keep what would fit in that basket because they were constantly getting little things and it would just, you know, it could overflow. So they could only keep what would fit in that basket as far as like little trinket kind of things, you know, those little plastic animals and those little whistles and just all these little things, but you know, kids love. <laughs> so they were allowed to keep, you know, what would fit. So they were allowed to keep what would fit in that basket. And if it started to get, you know, too full, they had to get rid of something before they were allowed to put more in. So that was just something to control all of the, the little stuff clutter. Another helpful tip is to take pictures of your kids with their school projects and that way you can get rid of the school projects. Now if they worked really hard and they love it and they care and all of that because once they get older they don't really care as much but when they are younger and they worked really hard on a project they might want to keep it for a little while and I think that's perfectly fine but once it starts to fall apart or they don't care about it anymore then you can pitch it but make sure you take a picture of your child with that project and as a mom of a son who just graduated I did scrapbooks of my kids when they were in elementary school so I did their field trips and first day of school last day of school lots of projects and all of that and it was really fun to look through and see my 
my kids with all of their projects but I didn't have to keep all of those projects because they would have broke anyway but it was really fun to look at you know when we did the insect project and made it look like they were at a campground and you know all these cool things um, that that was a really special thing and we didn't miss all of the huge projects sitting around because we had the memories there in the scrapbook so I just wanted to share that with you. My last tip is about cleaning, like dusting and all of that. And I have mentioned lots of times that I do that once a week. And I wanted to share some tips with you because I know some of you might be like, I'm homeschooling my kids. I don't have like a couple hours to set aside or I just don't feel like I could do that, you know, when my kids are little or whatever the case may be. So when my kids were little, our house was smaller and I could knock it out in about an hour and a half. And one, well, a few different things that I did and, and some of these might not work for everyone. I'm just going to throw some ideas out. When I had a baby and a toddler, my husband, like I said, he was in school, so he worked a weird shift and he would get home um, in the evening and my kids were already in bed. So they went to bed at 8.30 and he would get home at 10. I would clean the house then. I know some people are like, I would never want to clean my house at night. And I've had friends who only cleaned their house at night because that's when everyone was in bed and they could get it done. So if you're a night owl, if you get your second wind later, think about cleaning it in the evening. And my kids had never woke up from me cleaning and I could even go in their rooms and you know, I was quiet, but they never woke up. I couldn't vacuum in their rooms and I would just do that like the next morning. But that was something I could do once a week very easily when they got a little bit older and um, John had a different job. Um, they, they were were fine for an hour and a half because we had had quiet time and they were used to sometimes you know keeping themselves occupied and um, it just was part of our routine um, I can't remember what day of the week I cleaned back then but you know this day is my cleaning day so I'm gonna spend an hour and a half maybe that could be the time that you let your kids watch a full-length movie um, I wasn't one to like always sit my kids in front of the TV but if they have a movie they want to watch it's once a week or a set of shows or whatever you could do that you could have um, a special thing that they do during that cleaning time another option in case you're like none of those would work for me um, you could do it in the morning if you're a morning person before your kids get up you could do it at nap or quiet time if you feel like that would work for you Another thing that I did do for a little while, I just broke it up. So on Mondays, I would dust the whole house and it would take me about 15 or 20 minutes. If you just move fast, if you're like picking up clutter and you're, you know, rearranging drawers and all that, then it's going to take longer. But if you just say on Monday, I'm going to dust for like 15, 20 minutes, you can do that. Tuesday I would wipe down the glass and mirrors and picture frame glass and all of that. Wednesday um, would be like vacuuming and washing the wood floors. Um, Thursday would be like the bathrooms. So you could break it up that way. Another thing, I didn't actually do this because um, I was just in the habit of knocking it out pretty quickly, but I've had friends who swapped kids um, once a week for their cleaning time. So doing that, you would just do a full cleaning every other week, but say um, week one, you watch your friend's kids or your sister's kids or whatever and she has a little time where she can clean her house by herself and get it done and then the next week the kids go to your friend's or your sister's house and you get to do that. So that's another option. There are lots of different options for um, making sure you clean and tidy your home but you really can have a clean house. I think one of the most important things that I have noticed even in large families is having your kids get in the habit of cleaning up after themselves and helping out. I think that really is key and you probably have seen that in a lot of ways my tips reflected that. 
I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any tips that you would like to share on keeping your home clean and organized with children, I would love for you to comment below because a lot of people um, get great tips from you guys as well. Um, so definitely share. Thank you again for watching.